Okay, Chris, we've got three quarterbacks on the waiver wire this week that are 10% rostered or less that I think could start in week 11, week 12, week 13, maybe the rest of the season. One of them might actually even matter. Desmond Ritter is 10% rostered. After what we saw from Taylor Heineke, I don't think anybody would be surprised if after the bye they go back to Desmond Ritter. And I would expect he'll be a low-end number two quarterback. Tommy DeVito actually looks like he's improving a little bit, still just 7% rostered, might be a 2QB starter this week. And, and Jameis Winston at 3% rostered after the Derek Carr injury. They're hopeful that Carr is going to be ready ready after the bye, but this is not the first injury for Carr. He's been struggling mm-hmm. a little bit lately. Do you have interest in adding any of these three guys? Is Winston a must-add in a two-quarterback league just in case? It it's not great. It would be a, I would feel a lot better about it, obviously, if the Saints and Falcons weren't on a bye this week. But I I do think of these three, Desmond Ritter is probably the guy to add, and he's the most widely rostered. So I'm not sure how helpful that is. But I I would expect the Falcons are going to go back to him. He was they were moving the ball better with him at quarterback than they did with Taylor Heineke. It was just some poorly timed turnovers. You know the the fumble going into the end zone a couple times. So I would think he's going to be the starter moving forward. Jameis, if he is playing, I think he'd probably be a top 20 quarterback as long as he starts. But they've already said, like, they're not changing quarterbacks. It's just a question of if Derek Carr can play. The fact that he's already played through the shoulder injury suggests that he's going to probably try to toughen this out. And that makes me think that probably coming out of the bye, Derek Carr is going to be the starting quarterback for the Saints. I would agree with that. The prize of the waiver wire is Ty Chandler. We usually talk about 10% rostered or lower. He's 15%, but he needs to be probably close to 90%. We have Alexander Madison in the concussion protocol. Chandler has Kenne Nwongu and Miles Gaskin to share with. In other words, we think Ty Chandler is going to lead this backfield, had 15 carries, just three yards per carry, no targets in his most recent game. Did score a touchdown. Vikings fan Thomas would like for us to know that he also had another touchdown called back. It was almost 30 yards. Man, Thomas could not be more excited about a Joshua Dobbs, Ty Chandler backfield. <laughs> like, there's a legitimate chance that this is a Devin Singletary situation, right? Where Chandler starts a game and all of a sudden it looks like Chandler is the starting running back for the Vikings. Yeah, although. In the small sample size that we have, he has a lower success rate than Alexander Madison. I think he's averaging fewer yards per carry this season than Alexander Madison. So it's, look, they can't run the ball well. That's been a thing, whether it's Cam Akers, whether it's Alexander Madison, whether it's Ty Chandler, nobody has really run the ball well for the Vikings. So my guess is that Ty Chandler doesn't look all that great, and it just comes back to Alexander Madison getting... 58% of the work and Ty Chandler getting 42% or whatever it'll be moving forward. But yeah, there's a chance because Alexander, this is always the thing when, when we're talking about guys like Alexander Madison, when, you know, we say, well, who else is going to get the work? And it's just anybody who looks good. If it happens, it's just a question of does anyone else on the roster have more talent than Alexander Madison? I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think they're all probably, pretty middling talents at the running back position so yeah there's a chance that ty chandler has one good game and just runs away with this job but it's not the likeliest outcome if you were going to have a one week audition to try to take the job away from alexander madison doing so against arizona uh, well it's against the denver broncos oh sorry denver denver yeah not not it's not quite the uh the, the josh dobbs revenge game but yeah the denver broncos just gave up like nine yards per carry to james cook and they've given up more yards per carry than any team in the nfl this year Mm-hmm. So maybe Ty Chandler can be a high-end flex this week. He's the only guy that you're adding and actually thinking about starting in mm-hmm. Week 11. A couple other running backs, though. Rico Dowdle, 14% rostered. Zamir White, 5% rostered. These guys, at the beginning of the year, were, were the types of handcuffs who were rostered in 30, 40, maybe 50% of leagues. Now we've had so much turnover on the rosters, they've kind of fallen out of favor. Dowdle, in particular, I think, because he's older, probably available in more dynasty leagues than White. But these guys both have the are just one injury away from 15 plus touches per game, right? Yeah, I mean, Dowdle already got 12 last week. It was a, a weird, another weird Cowboys blowout where they they seem to be only playing in blowouts, and they are 10 point favorites this week as well. 10 and a half point favorites. It's the Panthers, so it could, yeah. It could be another situation where Rico Dowdle. It might make sense to project Rico Dowdle for 
double digit carries because they're not just you know throwing Tony Pollard out there for twenty six carries in, in blowouts. Yeah, I think Rico Dattle is someone who one injury away from an offense that is still a good situation for running backs. You know, they're still generating a lot of high value touches. I think Tony Pollard is still top five in expected fantasy points this season per ESPN's metric. It's just that he's been a sub replacement level player so far this season. And if Dattle can just be replacement level, he might be better in that situation, which is stunning to say, given the way we've talked about Tony Pollard the last few years. And maybe there's a lesson here that the way the Cowboys deploy their running backs makes the lead guy look less effective than they actually are, or makes the secondary guy look more effective. But that's where we are. I would you, I wouldn't be completely surprised if down the stretch, we saw this turn into more of a committee. I mean, I think we, we we're already starting to see it. There are more yeah. situations, you know, even before that game was a blowout, Dada was getting work. There were, you know, a couple of plays, at least in the first half where both were on the field, which I don't know that Rico Dattle is such a such an incredible talent that you need to put two running backs on the field to accommodate <laughs> him, but that's what they were doing. So yeah, I think we're we're already starting to see a little bit of a shift there. We've got two wide receivers on the waiver wire. One is probably a situation where he was rostered and then dropped, and and maybe we ought to roster him again just to make sure. I mentioned the Arizona target share. One guy who really seemed to benefit from Kyler Murray coming back was Rondale Moore, who saw his targets go back up. Moore has seen some really high-volume games Mm -hmm. with Kyler Murray under center. He's just 18% rostered. They use him occasionally running the football. In fact, I think he's averaging like seven yards per carry and has a touchdown. I I would like to make sure that Rondale Moore is rostered in my dynasty leagues just to make sure that he doesn't have finish with a flurry here. Yeah, one of my maybe dumb takes is that Rondale Moore, Rondale Moore is a running back. Yeah. Like, he's built like a running back. He kind of plays like a running back. I kind of think it would be interesting if they just put him in the backfield 18 snaps a game and see what happens. But he was in the backfield. Sorry, I'm trying to look up what the actual number was last week. He was in the backfield for five snaps. So they use him there occasionally, but it's not it's not a Debo Samuel situation. I think it would be interesting if they did. And there might No, be it's more placebo upside. Samuel. Placebo Samuel. Sure. There um, you go. No, it's um I, I do think that his eight targets could be partially an explanation for James Conner having zero. Yeah. I wonder if they'd rather just throw it to more out of the backfield, which could make him interesting in PPR. And the other guy, Trenton Irwin, I don't have any faith that T. Higgins is going to be ready for Thursday night football against the Ravens. I don't have a whole lot of faith that T. Higgins is going to stay healthy the next time he gets healthy. Yeah. So Irwin is someone, he's only 6% roster. Just in, in deeper dynasty leagues, go make sure he's added. And I'll just throw one more out there. Tanner Hudson. You know how much I love Irv Smith, but Tanner Hudson has been the most involved Bengals tight end in the passing game. I think he has 17 PPR points over his last two games. If you had to find a desperation option at tight end, he's barely rostered in 1% of leagues. So deeper tight end premium leagues, he might be interesting. Uh, Was Irv Smith third? He was third on the team Mm -hmm. in tight end snaps this week. The, The Irv Smith thing is not happening. No, it's it's over. He did score a touchdown right before it's not happening. So we we at least had that one last gasp of maybe it's happening.